Hello everybody, so we're going to talk today about the CPC, and I don't mean the Communist Party of China, I mean the Conservative Party of Canada, also known as the Tories. Now this is a party that I see a lot of accusations leveled against that they are in fact fascist. I remember particularly growing up during the Harper era, during the aughts, the 90s, and the 2010s, uh, this was all over the place. People called Harper a fascist, people said that he was George Bush's mini-me, they said he was a neocon. They said that he was a Christian fundamentalist, that he was a millenarian, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. They tried to say that he was far right, that he was implementing an authoritarian, conservative, right-wing nationalist deep state. I remember there was a, a book about that, about how Harper was bringing in a deep state and, and, and stuff like that. But it is something you hear a lot, and it, it is something you hear even today. It's become particularly prevalent under Pierre Polivier, um, just because of his personality and stuff like that. And a lot of people refer to him as being a fascist or far right or Canada's Donald Trump or stuff like that. So this is not an uncommon uh, opinion to hold. And it's been part of the narrative that's been present for a long time now. Now, I'm going to warn you up front, a lot of this might be kind of weird because Canadian politics works very differently than most parts of the world. So if, if something sounds kind of off, it's partially that. This is also just based on my interpretation, my understanding, the books that I've read, the experiences I've had growing up watching Canadian media and working Canadian politics. I obviously have my own bias, so just keep that in mind. You're free to agree with me or disagree with me. I try my best to at least be somewhat objective even if i do throw in a lot of sarcasm and humor and exaggeration and stuff like that so if you disagree with something i say feel free to post down in the comments so the conservative party of canada first existed as the liberal conservative party um, back during the 19th century it was kind of the original party of canada our first prime minister sir john a Macdonald, came from it who was the founder of our country and who is the main father of Canadian Confederation. Now, the, cons the Liberal Conservative Party would go on to shorten their name to just the Conservative Party. Then they would eventually merge with the Progressive Party to become the Progressive Conservative Party. And they would con kind of continue along that way until the uh, late 80s to early 90s, when the party would split apart into three different blocs. Um, you had the Bloc A Quebecois, uh, which was largely the... Quebec portion of the coalition, it would go on to become left-wing Quebec separatists. Um, the west, uh, the western half of the party, that is everywhere from Manitoba to British Columbia, would go on to become the uh, Alliance Party and the Reform Party, which tended to be more populist uh, and somewhat more socially conservative. And the Rump Party, the Progressive Conservatives, who I would just define as being a liberal party, uh, continue to exist in the other parts of Canada. And even if uh, collectively they would get a substantial portion of the vote, none of them would really get enough of the vote to be competitive. And it was looking like the Liberals would, ru would rule up Canada forever. Eventually you had the Unite the Right initiative where the Progressive Conservatives and Alliance Party merged together to form the Conservative Party of Canada in its current incarnation. So I guess the question next is, what is the ideology of the Conservative Party of Canada? So once again, this is just my interpretation of Canadian politics. But for most of Canadian political history, I would say the biggest divide is not necessarily ideological, but it's kind of an identity divide. So the Conservative Party in its various incarnations has tended to stand for Anglo-Canada. And in, in Canada, generally speaking, Europeans who... Uh, moved to the English-speaking parts of the country and, and learned to speak English, became Anglo-Canadians uh, for all functional purposes. So they tended to be Anglo-Canadian, they tended to be Protestant, they tended to be very pro-Britain, they tended to be against uh, attempts to sever our ties, very pro-monarchy, very pro-British Empire, and, and stuff like that. Whereas the Liberal Party tended to be the party of French Canadians, of Catholics of people who wanted a distinct Canadian identity that was based on biculturalism, and they wanted Canada to basically be an independent 
nation that was not really that had minimal ties to the United Kingdom. This is a very gross oversimplification, but generally speaking, that's how it worked. Over time, there became slightly more ideological differences, with the liberals moving quite leftward under uh, under Pierre Elliott Trudeau, and the conservatives, I suppose you could say, moving rightward under Brian Mulroney. But generally speaking, I would say the fundamental difference between the two tended to be over identity politics in that sense. Now, Brian Mulroney was a conservative, an Irish Catholic conservative from Quebec, and he was able to bring on board an immense number of Quebec voters who he had promised a whole bunch of uh, federalization things that would give them more rights and more autonomy and stuff like that. It didn't work out, and those people went on to form the Bloc Party. But we're, we're kind of getting off topic. I would say the main difference between the Liberal Party of Canada and the Conservative Party of Canada is once again kind of on the identity issue more than anything else. I think the Conservatives in Canada believe very strongly in the individual and in individualism. They believe in in multiculturalism, in like globalism, in, in mass immigration, in social liberalism, almost as much as the Liberal Party does but they express it on more of an individual level. That is, they want people to have the rights of the individual, but to live in a multicultural blended Canada. Whereas liberals, I find, tend to be more interested in in keeping society into various groups, be they Sikh or Muslim or Francophone, and try to define rights in a group context rather than an individual context. And in my opinion, that is the big difference between the two. Now, I know I've been rambling a bit. Before we get into this, it's important to keep in mind that what counts as being right-wing in Canada would be center-left in pretty much anywhere else in the world. It's probably more like a like a centrist or what's, what's considered centrist liberal party in Europe, maybe like the FDP or the Liberal Democrats in the UK or I guess the Conservatives in the UK or even maybe someone like Macron than it is like a even a, um, a supposed fake conservative party in, in Europe. There is really no what I would consider right wing in Canada in any um, size or scope. I mean, you have some Christian, like conservative Christians, you have some conservative Catholics, you have some people like me, you have some people who don't like mass immigration, but they're a very small percentage of the population and they don't really matter politically. And they just, the conservative party knows that they're just going to vote for them because there's nowhere else really they can go. They can vote for Bernier or the Christian Heritage Party or something but they're just an irrelevant percentage of the population, so they don't really have any pull. I also find factionalism isn't really a thing in Canada to the same degree it is in a lot of other countries uh, because of how centralized party discipline tends to be. Like People just aren't allowed to ever vote against their party in Canada or express an opinion contrary to their leader. Basically, just whatever the leader says goes. So you don't get, I think, the same degree of factionalism that you get in the Republican Party and stuff like that. Anyways, I've brambled on long enough. Let's get into the question. Is the Conservative Party of Canada fascist? Let's look at number one. An ideologically syncretic mixture of reactionary, conservative, and revolutionary slash progressive ideas. I'm actually going to have to, and this is going to be a surprise, have to give this a point. Because the modern Conservative Party is this just weird amalgamation of of different things, some of which tend to be very radical. Like their position on immigration is extremely radical. A lot of gender stuff, separation of church and state stuff. They have a lot of just exceedingly social liberal positions, but this will just be mixed with just random, like almost kind of mic drop moments where they'll be like, look, we 100% support transsexuals, but we don't want them in in bathrooms like they they are they are women but they can't go to the woman's bathroom they'll do stuff like that they'll randomly just be extremely harsh on crime um or just very hard on crime which will kind of be inconsistent with a lot of the rest of their their narrative almost for for a party that's as liberal as they are 
I find they're still stuck to a certain extent in the, the mid aughts with regards to stuff like Islam. They talk about like cultural practices and Canadian values and and stuff like that. However, their interpretation of Canadian values is basically, like I said, extreme social liberalism, but social liberalism in a very individualistic basis. So they do still tend to be like um, most conservatives in the at least in the Anglo tradition theoretically supportive of things like free speech, free expression, private property rights, and stuff like that. They also occasionally bring out like the flag or the queen and talk about Canada like in the empire or stuff like that and as kind of a hat tip to some of their more right leaning supporters. But it's it's very much all over the place. And I would say it is kind of a weird syncretic ideology um, that's very particular to Canada, but I would actually give them a point here. I, I would say this is not necessarily the case as much under Harper, who is more kind of a normal what passes for center right in Canada. I, I feel like it's it's they've gone through an I- multiple identity crises, and they don't really know like what they're doing at this point. Number two, identitarianism with a clearly defined in-group and out-group, cultural, religious, ethnic, or racial. Now, this one is difficult because I do actually think they meet this criteria. It's just very different from how most groups are. I tend to see them as being very, very civic nationalist. Um, Not even culturally nationalist, but just... They identify Canada as being a liberal country with liberal values, and the more you buy into liberal values and the more you signal against illiberal values, the more Canadian you are. So, And this does extend to the point where if you disagree with what's perceived as Canadian values, like you're racist or sexist or homophobic, um, you place your religion, your loyalty to God before your loyalty to the state— uh, you are part of the out group. You are a Muslim or you are a uh, something that is not part of Canada. But if you fully embrace what they consider to be Canadian values, um, then you will be fully Canadian. Th- there is probably a little bit just by the virtue of who their voter demographic is. Um, tendency in, in kind of something of an ethnic or racial direction, but... I would say, generally speaking, they're very strongly a civic nationalist party, and I do think they they will describe people who don't adhere to their understanding of Canadian identity as being liberalism and embodying the spirit of liberalism as being part of their out group, and they will get very vicious about it. So is this a massive stretch? Yes, but we're trying to keep it interesting. So they're going to get a point here. Three, a revanchist romantic nationalist desire to restore the nation to its former glory or avenge itself against a historical foe. I would actually say yes. I'd say this has been kind of a part of their policy ever since the 1990s, particularly with Harper and afterwards. I mean, you even had uh, Justin Trudeau say, uh, my opponent wants to make Canada great again, and that's not what Canadians want. Uh, you'll see the conservatives constantly talking about we need a we need a bigger army we need to restore Canada's place in the world we need to be the global peacekeeper we need to be the global peacemaker Canada needs to be a powerful respected country and you will find within Canadians Canadians I think are some of the most jingoistic people on the planet if you ever hear the way most people talk about Americans or or stuff like that you will just hear the most vile, violent, um, disgusting things said about them and how much better they are. It's also combined with a sense of profound self-hatred if you're dealing with liberals or, or dippers. But with regards to the conservatives, it's just this overwhelming smugness that Canada is the greatest country that's ever existed. And it's only it's not a, a great power because the liberals have underfunded the military and if we can just get back to, to power and we can, comprom- can promote our Canadian values, we can become a big player and we can become the United States' sidekick or something like that. So I do find them to be extremely civic nationalistic. It's just it's something that's largely in, yeah, not really interpretable to most countries on Earth that have more of a historical identity. And nationalism would be more associated with kind of the historical identity 
rather than kind of a set of liberal ideas. So they get a point there. A belief in the supremacy of the party or state, I'm going to definitely give them a zero here. As heirs to the um, a British and American conservative tradition, uh, generally speaking, they at least in theory have the idea that um, the government that governs best governs least, that um, we want smaller government, lower taxes, uh, things like that. Um, the belief in individual rights, as far as gun rights go in Canada, they tend to be the ones who support them. They tend to be anti-censorship and stuff like that. The thing, though, is in practice, whenever they're in power, they tend to do a lot like what at least the Republicans at a federal level do in the U.S., where they just go through spending orgies. So you, you'll get the scenario where it doesn't really matter who's in power. Uh, spending just always goes up. Uh, taxes are sometimes cut and sometimes not cut, but at least in terms of what their theoretical view is, um, they're technically small government Anglo-conservatives. A conception of a new idealized man. Um, you could make a bit of a case for this, but I, I think I'm going to have to say no. Um, I think they, they don't really see it as a new thing. Their, their narrative is kind of Canada has always been a multicultural country. Um, it's just their understanding of it is somewhat different. The liberals tend to be a lot more self-hating and third worldist kind of in their conception of it, wherein the, the conservatives tend to think it's awesome that we're a multicultural country, that we're the most tolerant, the most liberal place on earth. Um, and kind of the new Canadian man is slightly different. Um, the, the conservative one is definitely less effeminate. It's more of a man of action. It's more of a man who, like, is a businessman or something like that. But I don't think it's quite, it, it quite gets a point here. A foreign policy that places national self-interest above ideology, international law, or traditional morality. Uh, I'm going to say actually no. Um, the CPC's foreign policy is extremely ideological. Uh, it's very similar to just American neocons. It's just that Canada is never really in a position to do much because of how bad our army is. And because the Canadian public is generally not supportive of foreign wars. But generally speaking, the conservatives are very sympathetic to the Iraq war. We participated in Afghanistan. We participated in the war against ISIS. I think we participated in Operation OBGYN against the Houthis. Um, I think in Libya, generally speaking, uh, the conservatives take just a very hard line. Human rights, um, China bad dictatorship bad, democracy good, that kind of thing. While the liberals are also into a lot of those things, they're more, I guess you could say, third worldist. So they're more reluctant to like criticize China or some other countries because they view that as being racist, even if they, they have s somewhat similar ideas. Uh, and a difference to our marginalization of economics, I would say definitely no. Um, economics, I think, is often used as as something of a, I don't know, a code word or dog whistle or something like that, but it is the absolute belief of the leadership of the federal conservative party that all Canadians care about is economic issues. They don't care about social issues. They don't care really about foreign policy. They just care about stuff like the carbon tax um the carbon tax the gst the income taxes um letting pipelines be built their focus is just very heavily on uh economic issues balancing the budget reducing government spending do any of these things ever actually happen eh, a little bit i guess but no definitely they they at least in, in an ideological uh, rhetorical way do posit that they are a small government free market party. So they get a zero here. A masculine approach to problem solving, focusing on decisive action. Now within a Canadian context, I would say this is definitely the case. Um, generally speaking, conservative politicians, even if they're 
their ideas are very um, well their ideas are or what they're trying to promote is not in my opinion particularly masculine uh they do tend to be a lot more i don't know if aggressive is the right word for it um in your face masculine and in trying to to approach it you have Poliev who gets up in people's faces who calls Justo a wacko in parliament um i just find they tend to be a lot more aggressive in the way that they act generally speaking it's it's not that they're like a a masculine party it's just if you're right leaning in any or even centrist in canada there's no one else really to vote for. So if you're kind of a, a masculine man, you'll probably vote for the conservatives just by virtue of there's no really where else to go, um, to be honest. So I would say within a Canadian context, yes. Within a global context, no. But I do get that they're more aggressive and more forceful and more based on decisive action than, than is the norm in Canadian politics. So I will give them half a point here. Nine, encouragement of mass political action, often in the form of a political party or other organization. Uh, definitely no. They are are really bad at any kind of mass movement, any kind of organization, protest, stuff like that. You had the, the, the trucker protest, which they did not really take part in. But generally speaking, their activism is terrible. I never really see them do much. Their big attempt is the axe, the tax, which just no one really cares about. Um, I find this true of a lot of Anglo conservative parties is they kind of view mass politics as being a sort of um, form of harassment that they would just prefer people go to their church or their work or their family or whatever rather than spend time engaging in mass politics. So it's just not very high on their their list of, of things to do. Vanguardism or the belief in an elite intergroup to safeguard the new order slash revolution? No, not at all. In fact, once again, that is the big problem with conservatives, particularly in the Anglo world, is they tend to just not try to build their own institutions. They don't try to stack the deck. They don't try to go into academia or the civil service or start NGOs or stuff like that. It's it's very much politics for except for a very small group of people. Um is just not even a means to an end. It's just something that you don't want to think about. Once again, you should be focused on other things in your life, like making money and pay, uh, making money and making the uh, growing the GDP, than really doing anything else other than that. So you had all this stuff about Harper setting up a deep state. I've never seen evidence of any of this. Uh, I've never really seen evidence that his appointments had any kind of long term impact on the country. Um, they are just very they are not good at this at all the liberals are much much more effective at this okay an often charismatic leader who wields absolute or near absolute power over the state or movement now do i think polyev meets this no no i personally think he's a really cringy guy but this this seems to be a common belief um both among conservatives and among non-conservatives that he's this charismatic figure who's come to restore glory to the Conservative Party of Canada, who's going to lead them to victory, who has that X factor that's been missing for, for so long. People call him the Canadian Trump. He makes fun of journalists while eating apples. He posts stuff on Twitter. He presses Justo in the, uh, the house. So I'm going to give them a point here. Once again, this is by Canadian standards. Um, He's definitely more charismatic than Justo, but that is really like not saying much. Like when you look at the leadership of the federal parties between saying um Polyev and Justo, it's not exactly like the high energy crowd. I'll, I'll say that much. So I will give them a point there in all fairness and 10 sublimination of the individual and individual interests. Uh, individual rights into the interest of the group, state, or party. Now, 
on ideological grounds, this would be true, but the the form of they don't they aren't really a collectivist group. Now they do unconditionally support it, unlimited immigration, and they oppose any effort to restrict it. If anything, they might actually be more pro immigration at this point than the Liberal Party is, if if that's even uh, possible. So they do think that like in that context or in the context of um. I don't really think so. Um, they believe very, very strongly in individual rights and not in group rights. So kind of any attempt to do this is very much anathema to them. Uh, so I'm going to give them a zero here. So let us sum up. What did the Conservative Party of Canada do? Are they a fascist institution? Are they far right? Are they, are they Putler? Are they the Iron Guard reborn? So the Conservative Party of Canada has got 4.5 out of 12 on the is it fascist scale, which is an extremely low score, one of the lowest scores that we, we've gotten. And even then, you could argue a lot of the things that I attributed to it were just a stretch to try to make this video more interesting. But no, they're not a fascist party. They're like the most milk toast, fake conservative, liberal, whatever you want to call it, group that I, I can think of. There's nothing vaguely fascist about them. There's nothing socially conservative about them or populist about them or, or anything. They're very much like Repub like people in the States will say, oh, there's the blue team and the red team as like uh, saying Republicans and Democrats are the same. The fact that anyone would even consider like Polyev or even Maxine Bernier to be far right or right wing in general I think very much tells you pretty much everything about conservative politics in, in Canada that you ever would want to know. I remember a, a guy I was talking to, I think he was Dutch, was listening to a uh, Bernier speech. He goes, he sounds like the center left in my country. And I'm like, yeah, he probably does. But yeah, on most issues, I'd say they're very similar to the Republican Party in the 90s and aughts. With with all of with the big caveat that all the religious social conservative aspect is stripped out of it, and it's just much more socially liberal. But just a lot of the rhetoric, a lot of the way they view the world as a mannequin struggle between democracy and autocracy, and stuff like that, I find very similar. So on the whole, uh, I think we've determined the Conservative Party of Canada is not fascist in any form. The idea that it's fascist is, is frankly absurd. Uh, and I think that that covers this. So hope you enjoyed the video. I know a lot of you probably found my takes weird, but I mean, that's why you come here. You come here for weird takes. So talk to you guys later.